hand clap to Jesus. Let's give another hand to the Lord. Amen. We appreciate the choir this morning. They've done a wonderful, wonderful ministry. I thank God for this wonderful team. Let's give a hand clap because of this team here. God bless you. Now we turn to the scriptures. Uh, we're reading from Isaiah, uh, no, Psalm chapter 65. Psalm chapter 65. I'm reading from the NIV version. Praise awaits you, our God in Zion. To you, our vows will be fulfilled. You who answer prayer, to you all people will come. When we were overwhelmed by sins, you forgave our transgressions. Blessed are those you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with the good things of your house, of your holy temple. You answer us with awesome and righteous deeds. God, our Savior, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the further seas, who formed the mountains by your power, having armed yourself with strength, who stilled the roaring of the seas, the roaring of, the, of their waves, and the tumble of the nations. The whole earth, the Bible says, is full with awe at your wonders, where morning dawns, where evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. Now listen to this. You care for the land and water it. You enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with corn, for so you have ordained it. You drench its furrows and level its ridges. You soften it with the showers and bless its crops. Then the Bible goes on to say in verse 11, you crown the year with your bounty and your cuts overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the wilderness overflow. The hills are clothed with gladness. The meadows are covered with flocks and the valleys are mantled with corn, they shout for joy and sing. Let's pray. Almighty God, I thank you for this moment that now we are waiting to hear from you. Lord, I pray that your spirit rests in this place and that God, you use this vessel to communicate your word. Once again, I thank you for those who are following this service online and those who are following in the pavilion and in all the other overflow areas where this service is being followed. And I pray, Lord, as you bless us, bless them also. Indeed, I pray that now you breathe through this word. And according to 2 Timothy 3.16, that your word is inspired. And it's profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. That this manifold ministration of your word, Lord, will be realized in this place. Because we prayed in Jesus' name. And we all say, Amen. we may have our seats. I greet you all in Jesus' name. I also bring you greetings from Pastor Ambrose. Uh, he got a flu, and so he's not able to be with us uh, today. And so, Pastor Ambrose, since you are following this service online, God bless you. May he heal you quickly. Amaje, in Jesus' name. Amen. We have a young man uh, who is, uh, his name is Dos, and his wife is called Joanne, and they are doing biking around the world. We prayed for them in the first service. If they are here in the second service, I would just like to introduce them. Uh, Dos and Joanne, if you're in this service, are you around? They are not here. Okay. Yeah, we prayed for them in the first service. And they are biking to South Africa, then South America. They'll go into Antarctica. Then they go to Australia, New Zealand, then Asia. They'll go on to Europe, or they're actually here, uh, on to Europe. And then they'll come back through Egypt, uh, back to Kenya. Now, they are leaving tomorrow as they bike. They have two motorbikes. They leave tomorrow through Uganda. And uh, they'll be gone for three and a half years. It's going to take them three and a half years to cover the whole world. <laughs> and so as Parklands Baptist Church, we are really proud of them. Like Joshua 1, 3 says, everywhere you step, I have given to you. And they are going in the spirit of the Great Commission, taking nations for Jesus. And uh, so, uh, Dos, is, are you the one to say something? I'm your wife, eh? Sawa. 
Okay. Good afternoon, church. God is good. And all the time. And that is our testimony also. It's been two years of planning for this great adventure. And we leave tomorrow. And like Pastor said, uh, he gave you the route map that we're using. From you, we, pr- we ask you to pray for us. Continue praying for us. We are leaving family behind. My mom, my sisters, and the kids are somewhere in the congregation. We just ask for your support. To follow us, go on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Our name is Throttle Adventures. And let's get the word out there and Kenya out there. Asante sana. I bless you in Jesus' name. Together with this congregation, may God cover you with the blood of Jesus Christ. May his blessing rest upon you. May he cause the overflow we are talking about this month to flow through you. Wasalimieni sana. Everywhere you go, those churches, those pastors, say a big high for us. Another hand clap to Jesus. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, Pastor Regan informs me the registration for prayer, the team uh, for prayer and fasting will be in the magnification tent as you leave. We also have registration for the marriage seminar, which is this coming Sunday from morning up to 1 p.m., in the M-I-L-D tent outside. The title of the message is The Divine Overflow, A Time to Refresh. And this message comes to us uh, from Psalm 65 and also Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. The breakthrough you find in Psalm chapter 65 comes directly or is attributed to the presence of God. There is nothing that can compare with God. And I encourage you, I encourage families, I encourage those who are watching online to again reflect on the presence of God in our families, in our homes, in our workplaces. The presence of God makes all the difference. In fact, Psalm 65 is really about God and his presence and what he is able to do. Under divine overflow, a time to refresh, there are three things I bring to us uh, through this text. First of all, a river flowing from God's presence. Secondly, a reversal of the wilderness or the desert. And thirdly, a release of abundance. A river flowing from God's presence. This month, today being the first day of the seventh month of the year 2018, number seven is a number of rest, is also a number of breakthrough. Can we pray one prayer and pray, let divine rain fall. And we have sung, the choir has led us a song on the waters from above, the rain of God. Let us pray this prayer, divine rain fall, divine rain fall, a river flowing from God's presence. There's nothing as amazing as the refreshing anointing that comes from God. And God is about to anoint somebody in a very, very powerful way. Hallelujah. A special anointing. Because in our own strength, we cannot make it. But with God, all things are possible. I'll ask the team upstairs to give me that first point. Divine rain. A river flowing from God's presence. There are all kinds of rivers. And we know them. They have many names. But there is one river that flows from God's presence. And that river makes a difference. Now, when water is toxic, when water is polluted, it brings death and also brings problems to the soil. But when water is clean and pure, it brings life. There is a river that comes from God's presence, and this river makes all the difference. In Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 1 to 10, Ezekiel chapter 47, we shall read it. Ezekiel chapter 47. The man brought me back to the entrance of the temple, and I saw water coming out from under the threshold of the temple toward the east, For the temple faced east. The water was coming down from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar. He then brought me out and brought me through the north gate and led me around the outside to the outer gate facing east. And the water was trickling from the south side. Then verse 3. As the man went eastward with a measuring line in his hand, he measured over a thousand cubits and then led me through water that was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand cubits and led me through water that was knee deep. 
he measured off another thousand uh, and led me through water that was up to the waist. He measured off another thousand, but now it was a river that I could not cross because the water had risen and was deep enough to swim in, a river that no one could cross. As we continue reading, God wants us to go deeper and deeper to the place where we lose, this human nature loses control and God's waters now start carrying us. This is the waters of God. He asked me, son of man, do you see this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees. And this is what divine waters do, bringing a harvest on each side of the river. Verse 8, he said to me, this water flows toward the eastern region and goes down into the Arabah, where it enters the Dead Sea, uh, where, when, when, when it, it empties into the sea, the salty water there becomes fresh. The living water is turning salty water into fresh water. Hallelujah. Today I declare the living water is turning salty waters into fresh waters. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever this river flows. There will be a large number of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. Now, in the psalm that I just read, in Psalm 65 and verse 9, somewhere sandwiched in that verse, I think it's part C, there is a place it says in verse 9, yes, the streams of God are filled with water. The streams of God. And I want us to know today, the streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with grain, for so you have ordained it. There is a river flowing from God's presence. And this month, we can pray for divine rain. One lady in the Bible realized how beautiful these waters are. And her name is a Samaritan woman. In John chapter 4, from verse 4 to 12, she comes to a source of water called Jacob's Well. But standing next to Jacob's Well is another J, and his name is Jesus. Many people miss Jesus, and they go to Jacob's Well. And they look for refreshment in money, in career, in relationships, in traveling around the world, and looking for refreshment in the wrong places. But there is this lady who discovered that Jacob's well doesn't satisfy, and that there is a river flow that actually makes all the difference satisfying and also refreshing. In John chapter 4, verse 4 to 12, the Samaritan woman, just like any one of us between Monday and Saturday and the pursuits of life. Now he had to go through Samaria. Verse 5, so he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and today there are so many wells. Even after we leave this service, there are so many places we can go and try to get waters that are just counterfeit. The devil is a liar. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. In verse 7, when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said, and Jesus is standing by that other well that doesn't satisfy, and Jesus speaks to us, and he's speaking to us today. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Then verse 10, Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living waters. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with. She's still thinking in the physical. You have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? That is a question that uh, he say, she, she asked. Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? And the woman is saying, generations from long ago, they have always come to this well, and they have drunk this water. Now, who are you talking to me? Are you able to draw the water from inside here? It is very deep. I don't see you with a bucket and even with a rope. 
so that you can push it in there and you help me get, get water. But Jesus said, if you know whom you are talking to, you'd ask him to give you living water and you would never, never thirst again. I'll be coming back to the Samaritan woman in just a moment. But let me say today there is a river flowing from God's presence. And you have been going to other wells to try and get water. I'm reminding us in this month of divine overflow that there is a flow from above that God wants to bring right into our hearts, our emotions, our minds, and our spirit and cause an overflow. In John chapter 7, verse 38, this is what the Bible says. John 7 and verse 38. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. I want us to read this verse together. Let's do it together. Whoever believes in me, as scriptures have said, rivers of living water flow from within them. And so there is a stream in God's presence. And that stream is full of water. The angels are prepared to make furrows, you know, channels, to make furrows from God's presence and from that stream and that river and direct them to that place where that water is needed today. There is somebody here who needs a connection with this water I am talking about. And so the, the Samaritan woman missed the point and she was going to Jacob's well. She didn't know that standing to Jacob's well, the other J was actually the living water. Jesus, the river of God. Standing just next there to the well. But she wouldn't see it. Jesus begins to talk to her. But she misses, misses the point. Today I want us to know that there is a river. And that river carries water. And this month we can pray let the rain from above fall on us again. Hallelujah. You can pray for your son and your daughter because it's not by power nor by might, but by God's spirit you make it. That says the Lord. You say, let the rains of God fall on my son. Let the rains of God fall on my daughter. Somebody is praying that prayer. Let the rains of my, uh, from above fall on my husband or fall on my, my wife, on this neighborhood, in our homestead, in the bedroom, everywhere. And you pray, I want the showers that come from above to fall in this, in this location. Now, it's interesting that Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 is an outpouring of the rain from above. When God opens the heavens and pours out something from his presence, mankind cannot remain the same. You can never, never remain the same remain the same. If you receive the touch from above and the rains from above, you can never remain the same. In fact, these guys were touched by the Holy Spirit, the fire and the rain from above. Their tongues were transformed. They went to the city. They started preaching the gospel. And guys who had no ministry, no harvest, a bountiful, overflowing harvest, a season of bounty, started in their own personal lives. The Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. Talking about these people. The Bible says when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Verse 2. Suddenly, may the suddenly of God happen to somebody here right now. Even as I'm talking, upstairs, downstairs, and also online uh, in the overflow tent. Even as I'm sharing here, we pray, let the rain from above do what? Come down. And you can make it personal when you say, the rain from above fall on me. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be like uh, tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each one of them. This is what revival is about. All of them were filled. You know, filled. Kujazwa. All of them were filled. And choir, thank you very much for the singing today. Hallelujah. God bless you. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, if you jump to verse 16, the same chapter, can you jump on to verse 16? No, this is, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. The next verse, the, and we are in the last days. In the last days, God says, I will pour, the word here is like of water. I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons, and this is a prophetic word now, your sons and daughters will do what? Will prophesy. 
Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. The next verse, even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prof prophesy. We are praying this month, let the rains from God's river fall on us. Fall on me, fall on us. The Samaritan woman connects with the living water, Jesus Christ, and something new starts in her life. Are you here and feeling drained and discouraged and tired? And you feel like life has lost the zest and the oomph? I am saying there is a place you can drink from today. I pray, I'm saying there is a prayer you can pray today, a refreshment prayer, and you say, let the rains come on me. Now, we are all familiar with the showers, the bathroom. And uh, when you feel like stuffy and sweaty, you go to your bathroom and you switch on, whatever it is, the tap, and suddenly water starts coming. And under the jurisdiction of that place, you start receiving and uh, you, you're having the water coming on you. And nice feeling. The Bible says, he anoints my head with oil, my cup runneth over. A nice feeling. And then you shower and you get out. You keep going in there, going out. But let me say this. There is a shower better than that shower that you have in your bathroom. And I'm talking about the shower that comes from above. The waters of God. The Holy Spirit descending. And let me say, Nairobi will not be changed by ordinary people. Corruption will not leave our newspapers and even what people can talk in boardrooms, they can try everything they want to try. All the struggles and challenges we see today are not going to be changed because it requires divine power, divine power to change these things. But with a church that has allowed this divine outpouring to come upon every individual, children like you had, the youth, the men, and the women, to come upon the leadership, a church like that one, one individual will change a city. Hallelujah. God enables by a divine shower. And this overflow comes from the river of God. The divine rain coming upon us. But I must also share a reversal of the wilderness. The second thing here. Psalm 65 in verse 10. Divine restoration. A reversal of the wilderness. In verse 10, the Bible says, You drench its furrows and level its ridges. You soften it with showers and bless its crops. You can go to verse 11. You crown the year uh, with your bounty, and your cuts uh, overflow with abundance. Deserts are disappearing this month. Hallelujah. Wildernesses are disappearing this month because of these uh, waters from above. In this time of refreshment, I see uh, deserts losing ground. And my prayer is this. In your life, in my life, may deserts disappear this month in Jesus' name. This water is not just ordinary water. It is water that reverses the conditions of the wilderness. And wildernesses become a place for growing crops. The soil is turned around and it becomes, it becomes lush once again. The Samaritan woman was walking with a wilderness inside her. She didn't know. There was a desert. There was a thirst in this woman that nobody could quench. In John chapter 4, verse 13 to 15, about the Samaritan woman, John chapter 4, verse 13 to 15, Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. That's water from Jacob's well. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and I have to keep coming here to draw water. I hear somebody here in this sanctuary, somebody may be here or this side or somewhere here or here or up there. You know, I'm hearing somebody speaking from their heart, saying, Sir, to Jesus, give me this water so that I don't do what? I don't thirst again. The wilderness and desert of thirst. Thirst is not a good thing. Thirst is not a good experience. 
And uh, she says, I don't want to live in thirst anymore. Tell me, how do I break this thirst? Tell me, how do I break this wilderness in my life? How do I break this desert? What is it that breaks the yoke of the spirit of the desert? And he says, tell me, how, how am I going to do it? And I thank God she asked the question to the right person, and you probably are here, and you have been trying to quench your thirst and sort out that wilderness and sort out that desert by those things I said earlier, by pursuing more education, by trying to get more money, by tra traveling all over, by getting more and more dramatic excitements and experiences. And every time you go for that experience, you are happy, you are excited, but then you come back to your house and you wonder, what was that all about? And this lady says, well, yes, I've had five husbands. I have tried life as it's known in the city of Saika. Everybody knows me. I have tried this experiment called life, and I've tried to get excited, but every time I go five, five steps one direction, I find it a lie. I go this other path, I find it a lie. I try the other path, I find it a lie. And so this woman has reached a place. It's a desert in her heart. And she's saying, tell me, how do I get this water? And I want to tell you today that deserts can be reversed. And deserts will be reversed. Indeed, today and this month, deserts are losing ground. Wildernesses are losing ground. This water is patching up the soil once again. And uh, the deserts are disappearing. In Isaiah 43, Isaiah 43, verse 18 to 21, Isaiah chapter 43, God is doing something new and something fresh from verse 18. The Bible says, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing what? And you think, now it does what? It springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. That's what God is doing. I want to repeat that verse again. Go back to verse 19. I want us to read it together. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wastelands. And then those wastelands change. If you read the next verse, uh, chapter 20, the wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen. The lady, the Samaritan woman, is, her, her thirst is quenched by Jesus Christ and her desert situation goes. Somebody uh, has a desert in their mind Somebody else is a desert or wilderness in their emotions. Dry, dry, dry. Uh, somebody else is in the spirit, a dryness. And somebody probably is even in the physique because when the inside is dry and there is nothing inside there, then it shows through, it beams through. And you go to situations where you're supposed to be ministering to people, but you have nothing because it is dry. In fact, you just go flat. You just go, you get lost. You don't know what to do. But I want to thank God. When this river connects with your soul and with your heart, the river fills and overflows. And therefore, you start ministering from the overflow. Do you know there's a scripture in the Bible that says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. When you hear somebody, in, in, in biblical terms, there is no sleep of tongue. There is nothing like sleep of tongue. Because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth, speaks. So next time somebody says something, say, sorry, I didn't mean it. Actually, that is what is inside them, what they just said. It was not a sleep of the tongue. Now, when God fills you, your sleep of the tongue will be so beautiful to your children, to your spouses, you're not your workmates. It's going to be beautiful. Rivers of living waters, an overflow, a river from above, a river inside, a river out. Rivers of living, in fact, it's in the pl plural, Rivers of living waters will flow through the mouth, through the hands, through actions, through your demeanor, through the way you see, through the way you do things. And it's just going to be a blessing this way, a blessing that way, a blessing this way, and the other way, blessing up and down. Any time of the day, 24-7, both night and day, the Bible says rivers of living waters flow out of you. It is like uh, 
streams of water flowing everywhere. Can you imagine if somebody, the person next to you, water starts coming from every side, and people are being touched around you. Rivers, it doesn't matter which direction. Rivers of living waters flowing out of you. From a desert, you know, to a supplier and a minister of water. So the Samaritan woman, when she was turned around by Jesus and her thirst was broken, you know what she does? She goes back to Saika. She's now a minister. The Lord has done something, broken a desert in the heart of a woman and filled it with something meaningful and something useful. And Jesus has filled this lady to overflowing. It is showing and ebbing out through her essence. As she is going back to Saika, she doesn't need to talk to anyone. Everybody can see the glory of God. Everybody can see that something has happened to this lady. They look at her, she has a new glory. As they look at her, the same question they ask, she asked Jesus, what do I do for this thirst to be quenched? They are asking her, what happened to you? Your thirst has been quenched. What happened to you? And then she says, come follow me, and I'll take you to the man who made a difference in my life. They close all the shops, the bars, the butcheries, the gambling shops, and all the other shops, they are all closed. The cinemas, they are also closed, and those who are watching a movie actually get out, and they are following this lady so that she can take them to where, you know, Jesus is. That is the power and beauty when the desert is actually broken. And God gives you something that you can share, something that you can actually bless other people with, a reversal of the wilderness. Is there somebody here today, and you know you've just been going through a desert, both inside and both around you, you know, inside and out, and you've been trying to, to, to look strong and make things look uh, like they are okay. God is saying, today I have a supply for you. Hallelujah. There is something I want to do with you. We are praying, let the rains fall, let the rains fall on me. Let the rains come in me, and let the rains flow outside me. If you are here today, and you are also in the pavilion or watching online, I want to say the streams of God are full of water. And God is ready to connect a faru, uh, what do you call that? Amtaro. So he sounds a little better. Amtaro, straight, specific for you. Straight from that water source that's so beautiful. And that water will come right in, into your life. And uh, flow even outside, uh, outside, outside your life. God is able to take away bitterness. You know... Um, Bitterness, those waters inside, uh, anger and other waters. God is able to deal with that. Dilute with his water. You know, dilute that and completely overwhelm, overcome it. And that bad water gets out. And then uh, he's able to refill that, you know, with, with good waters. In Second Kings uh, and uh, chapter 12, verse 21, I believe it's chapter 12. Yes, chapter 12, uh, let, let me have that. 2 Kings 12, verse, verse 21. Uh, is that 2 uh, Kings? Chapter 2, chapter 2, sorry. Chapter 2, I need glasses. 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 21. Some of the bitter waters and how they can actually be changed. Then he went out to the spring and threw the salt into it, saying, this is what the Lord says, I have healed this water. Never again will it cause death or make the land unproductive. And the Bible says, and the water has remained what? Pure to this day, according to the word Elisha had, has, had spoken. And so when these living waters, the refreshing waters go in, they start removing the poison that is killing you slowly and quickly changing the inside into something so refreshed and so beautiful so that everywhere you go, you are giving and serving, and what you give, and what you serve, is something really, really beautiful. Is somebody seeing God reversing a wilderness? In your financial areas, hallelujah. God is reversing that wilderness and that desert, and is doing something good, something new, divine restoration. But finally, a release of abundance. There are three pictures in this text. The first one is of a river which I've shared, 
The second one is a wilderness reversed, a river flowing. Secondly, a wilderness reversed. But there is also a picture of bounty in the text. That's the last picture we have. And this is a, a picture of car, a cart carrying so much to overflowing. In verse 11, uh, verse 11 to verse 13, I will read uh, that verse from verse 11. Let's have it on the screen. Uh, verse 11 to verse 13. You crown the year with your bounty and your cuts overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the wilderness overflow. These are big words, amazing words used, like overflow there. The hills are clothed with gladness. The meadows are covered with flocks and the valleys are mantled with grain. They shout for joy and sing. God desires that we walk in the overflow, and he wants to equip us with divine riches. In Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 8, the riches of Christ cannot be exhausted. Philippians 3 verse 8, although I'm less than the least of all the Lord's people, this grace was given to me. Paul is saying I had nothing, but this grace was given to me, and now I can minister to preach the Gentiles the what? The boundless riches of Christ. Philippians 4.19, I think we, all, we know this one. My God shall supply, what? All my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. A release of abundance. When these waters touch the soil, the soil becomes soft. And the soil becomes ready to receive the seed. Unless the Lord touches the market where you work, Unless this waters touch that family where you are based on. There will be hardness of heart. That, you know, hardness of the situation. That nothing can change. But when these waters touch the soil, they make, it, uh, they make it soft. And then when you put your talent and your gift and anything else you put in this soil, suddenly the seed shows up, comes up, and then a crop comes up, and then a harvest uh, comes up, and not a small harvest. You're talking about divine, divine riches. Divine riches are multiplied riches. They are not the trickling ones, the little one, kidogo. Kido. These, are, these are just amazing. Suddenly, in this crop, the maize starts showing up. In the first service, I said, and I say here, may God expand you 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold in Jesus' name. I want to repeat it again. Somebody needs to receive this. In the overflow tent, may God multiply you 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. Is somebody receiving that? This month, I'm talking about this month, God is going to do a miracle. The one who takes a seed inside the soil, causes it to die, but then causes a shoot to come out. That's the power of God. No man can do that. And then something comes up and you can see it with your eyes. And over time, if it's a maize plant, a cob comes out. Do you know what I'm praying? Now we are used to maize doing two cobs. I am praying here in Jesus' name that your maize, the one you are planting, understand me. Yes, those who don't plant maize, I'm talking about your career. I'm talking about your talents. For the young people here who design apps and other things in the IT sector, may God take what you are planting in Jesus' name and cause it to multiply wherever God has put you. One maize, two maize. We are not stopping there. What I'm saying is 30-fold Three, four, five, six, and uh, I say even seven, because it's July, hallelujah, the seventh month. Now you plant one seed, and because you are de depending on the divine waters, yours goes one, two, three, four. But the neighbor who is actually here, the same grounds here, the neighbor, they put one seed, it struggles to come out. Have you ever gone through an experience like that? Yeah, you're sowing and it's struggling even to come out. You have to, work, you have to do so much work. And then it comes kidogo and it's struggling. But eventually, it only produces one cob and it's very small. That one, for me who, lo who loves uh, boiled maize, we call it mutugo. It's something that you chew very fast and you finish. But on this side, for the one who trusts the Lord, the one who is trusting God for a Pentecost experience, a harvest comes out of you. Touching nations, changing people, changing situations, a mighty harvest. On this side, you lead one person to Christ this week, next week two people to Christ, the other week three people to Christ, and you finish the month of July. At the end of it, 
and I hope we can do a test, uh, Pastor Kiniti, at the end of uh, July and ask how many people have come to Jesus through your life, through the seed that you are. How many people have turned to Jesus? I don't know how last month was for you, but to see in the month of July, everybody hearing me, even the ones online, you have brought to church one person, two people, and even seven. So one maze, another one, another one, another. Is somebody claiming that? Yes, up to tire four. I was in a birthday the other day, I don't know, this week, and that person, they had reached five, fifth story. I think they were talking about fifth floor. Fifth floor. They are now 50. They are going to sixth floor. My, my brother, on Rabuanyeki, <laughs> talk like that. Ainakuja moja, mbili, tatu, nne, tano, sita, until you even want to say, Lord, stop now. That's what God wants to do. That's what he's able to do. Let us not limit God. But we must allow him to fill us with these divine waters. And let those waters come into us. And they begin to overflow. You minister this way. You minister that way. People are getting saved this way and the other way. And you go, you start a business. It grows north, south, east, and west. Somebody started a business recently here. And I want to say to you, are you hearing me? Started a business. Uh, you just registered. You know, just started. I am saying this in Jesus' name. You are, this month, you will see an acceleration. God will show up suddenly. And you'll amaze even people who have been in that business for a long time. They will say, this is a rookie. What can this one do in this world of macho people? But you enter there in the name of Jesus. Again, Pastor Kennedy, thanks for that prayer. The prayer, the name that leads us to the overflow. And choir, thanks for singing that song. And you enter that world in the name of Jesus. And suddenly things start multiplying like this. Divine riches are coming in your direction. Divine riches are coming in my direction. This is a revival even in the area of wealth. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, the Bible says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things will be one. Yeah, so you are fully, pulling a mkokoteni or even a lorry or something. And God is just adding, can you imagine? Every time you look like this, there is something more. Every time you look like this, imeja. Ata ifike mahali, inaja, paka zinaanza, watu wengine waokote, zinaanza kumuagika. Are you seeing that picture about your situation? There are three pictures in the text. A river that never dries up. That's the picture number one. Number two, is that river connecting with you and me and bringing overflow? Number three is a picture of this bounty here. And God is saying today, through this month, uh, this month of July, the seventh month, that I am the divine Lord of the overflow. The earth belongs to me. Psalms 24 and verse 1. The earth belongs to me and the fullness thereof. thereof. Psalms 24 and verse 1. This earth you see here belongs to the Lord and even everything that is in it. And he's saying, that's who I am. I am Jehovah Jireh. I own everything. There is nothing impossible with me. Why don't you tap from me? Why don't you just connect to me and tap from me? And I'll show myself in your life in a way the whole world will know that the Lord has done something uh, for, for this brother, uh, for, for even this sister. As I, as I close, Peter caught nothing the whole night. They were using their own strength to do fishing. And the whole night, it doesn't matter which strategies you come up with, God is the author of everything. Hallelujah. The whole night caught nothing. Jesus shows up. He is this living water. He is the source of all bounty. He uses the boat of Peter and company. And after using the boat of Peter and company, he releases a word of bounty. It's called a word of harvest. It's a marketplace word. That is a marketplace word. Jesus is talking to a business person. He's in the fish industry. And this guy caught nothing the whole night. Comes and they're just sorting out their nets. Jesus looks at him and says, this is not the way it's supposed to be. This guy is supposed to live in bounty. And he tells him, go back there. There is a song we sang here, touch me once more. Go back there once again. Throw your net based on my command. And I'm speaking to somebody here today. Go back there, try once more, 
I am speaking the same word, a word of bounty in your direction. And they threw the net. And I tell you, fish were competing uh, to actually get into this net. May fish compete to get into your net. Hallelujah. I see somebody receiving that. Is somebody receiving that? Yes, may fish compete to get into your net. Because when you are blessed, I'm blessed. Hallelujah. And when you are blessed, the person sitting next to you is blessed. Can you turn to the person next to you and tell them, when you are blessed, I'm blessed. In the overflow tent, tell somebody, when you are blessed, I am blessed. And if you are online, you are alone watching, you can also speak to space. <laughs> and you say, when you are blessed, I, I am also blessed. Is somebody feeling their pocket right now? Put your hand in the pocket, the man. Yeah? I speak divine riches. Hallelujah. And if you have a wealth wallet like mine, can you remove it and wave it in the air? In Jesus' name. I am speaking divine riches. Divine riches inside that wallet. This is for the men inside that wallet. In Jesus' name. For there is... <laughs> the ladies are... Oh, I see. For Georgie, I see. It can be a card like that one. So that your ATM, <laughs> Frida, you know, and Amahia, your Alice, you know, your ATM gets to the overflow. I was speaking to the men. Now for the ladies, what do we do? <laughs> yes, if you carried your pass, lift it in there, and I speak. Yes, divine riches in the overflow. Lift your pass, ladies. Divine riches into those passes. And what I'm saying is this. The Lord will fill them to the overflow. You'll even be looking for others. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, that's right. To share these riches and this wealth. Because our God is more than able. He is the God of the divine overflow. And when he starts doing something, he doesn't do kidogo kidogo like he's doing games. He puts and puts and puts. It's you who will end up saying, stop now, Lord. And it goes to the overflow. God is refreshing somebody today. God is renewing a destiny here today. Our God is more than able. We are going to sing a song, and I'll ask Pastor Regan uh, to lead us in this song. And this song is a, is it a prayer, uh, Pastor Joji? Yes, about the rain? Yeah, right. It's a prayer. We shall use this song as a prayer. And after we have sung this song, I will lead us in a prayer of blessing. As we sing this song, you don't have to come in front. Just where you are, you can ask the rain to fall on you. You ask God to bless you. You ask God to bless you in such a way that you get to the overflow. And then you ask God to bless you in such a way you get to the overflow that you begin to become a minister so that you start giving. The Bible says, give and it shall be given to you. Good measure, press down, shaken together, running over will be put into your lap. Because the measure with which you give, the measure you get back. If you come with a small kiondo, that's what God gives. But if you come with a large one, that's what God also feels. Where God is, he never knows luck. He is more than able. So we shall sing a prayer. And then after that prayer, then I can lead us in this prayer of blessing. I want us to stand up. Just stand up where you are. I know as you stand up, you know where you want this rain to fall. For somebody saying, let this rain fall on me. Somebody else says, I want it to fall on my brother or my sister or my family in my, in my village, in our city, in Nairobi. I want to see the rains from above fall. The Holy Spirit, when we pray like this, comes down with power, comes down with grace and gifts and leads us to the mighty harvest. I'll ask the team to lead us uh, in the song, Pastor Kiniti, I think the altar call will be where people are. Just where you are, we are praying uh, a prayer through this song. Open the flood gates of heaven. Let
let it rain. There's somebody who is saying, let it rain salvation on me today. You're not born again. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you and saying, you better open your heart. Don't harden your heart. Don't allow it to be a desert. Somebody saying, let it rain salvation on me. There's somebody else who is praying as we sing, let healing waters just rain on me. Somebody who has been discouraged in life, the rains of encouragement, the rain, the rain of hope, the rain of restoration, the, the rain of direction. You know, there is rain you are asking for. As we say, let it rain. As you pray and, uh, in through this song, you can also release that rain on the life of somebody else, your boss or somebody else. A difficult situation, let God's rain fall on a person in a situation. This is a prayer we are actually praying. This time round, I'll ask us to lift our hands as we just sing that prayer once again. Floodgates of heaven, let it rain. Let me pray as hands are lifted up to God there is a river that carries divine water and that river is ready to release water divine water the rains that are divine and that river those waters are ready to be released to a person who is willing to be showered in divine rains and divine waters the angels have already made the mitaro let me call them mitaro the pharaohs so that the water can flow by faith my brother my sister you can you know your own situation you know you and i know we need these waters from above in our lives and our situations now would you ask a pharaoh cut directly to your destination and directly to your address god's waters are amazing and God is saying, I'm going to fill you to overflowing. And you're going to be a big, big blessing. I am breaking the spirit of the wilderness. I am breaking the spirit of stagnation. I am breaking the desert spirit. Those spirits bring poverty. They bring destruction. They are dry spirits. We don't need them in Jesus' name. Today I cast out all the dry and drying spirits in the name of Jesus. And I'm asking the flow of the rain from above now start touching every one of us every life right now in the name of Jesus 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 Holy Spirit come we are asking for another Pentecost in the last days where you say I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh men women the young and even the children Holy Spirit as a church Parklands Baptist Church here in Africa, in Westlands, we open ourselves up for the move, a powerful move of the Holy Spirit again in our season. Holy Spirit, rain on us. Rain on us. Holy Spirit, rain on us. Rain on us. Rain on us. I can hear somebody speaking in tongues right now. God is taking over your hands. God is taking over your feet. God is taking over your emotions. God is taking over your spirit. God is taking over your mind. God is saturating and filling every area of your life with these rains that come from above. I thank you for the healing flow. I thank you for the forgiving flow. I thank you uh, for the restoring flow. I thank you, Lord, for the rebuilding flow. Somebody needs a flow in their lives. There has never been a flow in your life. Things seem to stop and cut and start and jump and go everywhere. There has never been a flow in your life. God is saying, I'm giving you a flow once again. And not just a flow, I am giving you an overflow. Our God is able. Our God is able. Our God is able. Our God is able. Ha! 
Haleluya. 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 As a pastor, I see as a pastor, I see you crowned with bounty. I see you crowned with bounty in the office. Crowned with bounty in your business. Crowned crown with bounty in your finances. Crowned with bounty in your health. Crowned with bounty at home. Crowned with bounty on the streets. Crowned with bounty in the village. Crowned in bounty in your ideas. Innovation. Creative ideas. Overflowing. Receive. Receive in Jesus name. Hallelujah. I thank you God. I thank you Father. I exalt you. I magnify your name. Hallelujah. Father therefore. We speak with authority and we prophesy. To the month of July. You are not a hard month. You are not a desert month. Yield. Yield in Jesus name. Yield a harvest. 30 fold. 60 fold. 100 fold. Money fold. Overflowing. The month of July. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Now I want us to say. Lord Jesus. I thank you for the you are the author of abundance of bounty of the overflow like the Samaritan woman I receive my bounty my overflow my abundance today I will overflow this month I will overflow I have a ministry. I will give and give and give because you have blessed me. Today, open the heavens and pour your blessings in my direction. Let's lift our hands to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Now we lift our hands to God. Lift our hands to God. My Father, this church trusts in you. Like the writer of the Proverbs say, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge God and he shall direct your paths. We lift our hands as a sign of faith and as a sign of surrender to you. Saying we trust you and trust you fully. Now my Father, I can see open heavens and I can see angels very active opening the storehouse of God and bringing supplies upon supplies as you lift your hands to God I want you to see a connection between yourself and the storehouse of God and I want you to see the supply of God that wilderness is broken right now in Jesus name that desert is broken now in Jesus name from here you will walk in the overflow that is what God is saying. My Father, I pray now. Bless your people on Monday. Bless us on Tuesday. Bless us on Wednesday. Bless us on Thursday. Bless us on Friday. Bless us on Saturday. Bless us on Sunday. Bless us like Abraham. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Now I want us to say together, I am blessed. I am blessed indeed and the devil can do nothing about it no divination no witchcraft no, no, no curse shall function in my life in my children if you have children and grandchildren and great grandchildren in my seat I am blessed this July every day I am blessed. I shall walk in blessings. Let's pause for a moment. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our God is good. Amen. 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 We thank God. Hallelujah. We shall say the grace in just a moment. Those who are baptized on 9th of June, we had 62 baptized. Would you wave in the air? Those who are baptized and you're here, just wave. Lift your hands. That's a good thing. Yes, let's appreciate them. Let's give a hand to the Lord. We thank God for you. Thank you very much. You are blessed. You are blessed. Double blessed. Big time. 
And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Amen. Have a good week.